get involved in people's lives. He wants us to get involved because I told someone yesterday, I said, I am an instrument of change. I am an instrument for change. I'm in your life to help you change. Because if you get around me, you'll change. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's true. You know, we're an influence, right? We are an influence. You guys, you guys are an influence for either good or evil. You guys are an influence. It all depends on what kind of seed you have. Amen? What kind of seed you have. If you're a good tree, you'll bring forth good fruit, which is a good influence. If you're a bad tree, you're going to bear forth bad fruit, which is a not-so-good influence. <laughs> Amen? I used to be one of those bad trees. In fact, I was, in, in, instead of me being the influencer, I was being influenced. Can I get an amen? I was being influenced by other people. Instead of being a leader, I was a follower. <clears throat> and mind you, it's not a bad thing to be a follower as long as you're following the right kind of people. Amen? Amen? But if you're being influenced by evil, sometimes you have no idea what's going on around you. And you end up finding out before, you know, you end up finding out when it's too late sometimes, or hopefully, well, I, I have to be honest, we often find out when it's too late and then we end up burning a bridge or finding ourselves in a heap of trouble, which ain't necessarily bad. Because as long as you see the manifestation of the fruit, as long as you see the manifestation of that fruit, and you are able to make a decision to change, right? To seek help and to change, God says we have to be born again. So we have to get rid of that old tree, that dead man, right? We have to crucify the flesh. As long as we can make those kinds of decisions and see the, the aspects of the fruit. See, that's the only reason why I don't go back to drugs and alcohol is because I see the full effect of the uh, aspect of the fruit. I, I see the full effect and I hate it. I hate every form of uh, medicate. Well, let's, eh, I don't want to go there, Lord. Please, I don't want to go there. I do not like marijuana. I do not like cocaine. I hate, I hate these things. I hate them, I hate them, I hate them. Other medications, I hate them because I know the fruit I know that it's not good. You cannot tell me otherwise. I'm just saying, uh, mm, 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 please, Lord, please do not open up the doors. Please do not allow us to open up these doors. Please, Lord, do not allow us to open up these doors. In Jesus' name. Hey, Mr. Jimmy. Good morning, sir. So anyway, that's the reason why I've, I've changed, is because I see. See, uh, I was once blind, the Bible says, but now I see. Amen. Hey, Tania. I got it. Jimmy, Bruce, Veronica. <laughs> uh, the only reason why I, I'm not sinning is because I see the effects. Okay, and I don't want to go down that road. And I think you guys are the same way. Amen. Hey, Mr. Skinner, Mr. Chief, uh, I don't want to go down that road. I see it. I was ignorant when I was in drugs. I was ignorant when I was on alcohol. I, I knew to some degree, I knew it. 
because we're all sinning because we like it, because we want to do it, regardless of the effects, right? But I was really ignorant. I was really stupid. And, and when, when I came into the full effect of that sin, when that sin brought me into a place of death, the Bible says, right, in Romans, that, um, that death produces something. Right? What does it what does death produce? Death produces a fruit. And and the effects of death is separation. Right? The effects of death, if you look up in the uh, in the Hebrew or the Greek, I'm sorry, if you look up in the Greek for the word death, it just means separation. Okay? Separation from what? Separation from the body is a physical death. Separation from God is a spiritual death. Amen? Sometimes you're separated from your family, right? And, and now you're excluded. You're now uh, polluted. You're now no longer uh, acceptable. Okay? Those things are times of death. Okay? And, and, and sin produces all kinds of different kinds of fruit when it comes down to the thing called death, it doesn't necessarily destroy you, okay? Even though it does, it has some different kinds of effects because <clears throat> God wants you to open up your eyes. God wants you to scream. God wants you to cry out. God wants you to see the full effect of sin and he wants you to turn from your wicked way, okay? That, that's that's a, a process of learning, praise God. Thank you, Jesus, that I can learn. Thank you, Jesus, that my eyes could be opened. Thank you, Jesus, for opening up my eyes. Thank you, Jesus, that I see the full effects of sin. And I no longer want to be a part of that. Lord, I thank you for not just delivering me out of that miry clay, but giving me the opportunity to see what that miry clay is and why I got there. Because I don't have to go there anymore. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I scream and I cry out. Not because I'm in sin, but because I see others in sin. And I scream and I cry out and I ask God to forgive them. To give them a chance to come out of that miry clay to open up their eyes that they may see the truth so that the truth will set them free. Hallelujah. Lord, please open up our eyes. Please open up our eyes that we may see the full effect of what sin is doing. <laughs> that we may turn away from it, God. Sin is so deceiving. Sin is so deceiving. It looks good. It tastes good. It smells good. But in it, it brings forth a separation. And you don't want to know the kinds of effects. You don't want to know those different kinds of effects. Because it can be really, really hard in any situation, right? Any kind of form of separation is going to be a time of hardship. And I'm telling you the truth, you don't want to go through the process. You can listen to wisdom. You can listen to reason and turn yourself away, right? That's why I pray. That's why I preach. That's why I teach is that someone may listen and turn away and learn from my mistakes, learn from my reasoning, learn from my understanding, because I see I see. Lord, right now, in Jesus' name, let me speak the truth in love that they may see the truth. Lord, please turn us away, Lord. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Please hear the voice of God this morning. If there are things 
If there are things that are causing you to be separated, please learn from those things and turn away. Listen, it's not God's design that you be separated. It's not God's design that you be separated from your family. It's not God's design that you be separated from the church. It's not God's design. It's not God's design. God, God gives us life, and then God gives us family, and then God gives us community. That's His structure. That's His design. It goes all the way back to the book of Genesis. God gives life. He gives family. He puts us in our family, doesn't He? He gives family. Why does he give family? So that we can change. <laughs> we can change. It's the only reason why I'm, I'm in a relationship is because I need to change. My pastor told me a long time ago, because I was having all kinds of little girls, and I was really hoping to have a little boy. We kept on having girls, one, two, and three. My pastor came up to me, he says, I know why God has given you girls and not boys. I said, I'd sure like to know why I'm getting all these little girls and not boys. Because I grew up with a bunch of boys. There's six boys in my family. We all hung out together. We all did things together. I'm a part of a big family with a bunch of boys. And here I am having girls. Pastor looks at me, he says, you need to learn how to love. <laughs> you need to learn how to love. Girls will make you. <laughs> Girls will teach you how to love. Whether they're your daughters or your wife or a friend or a grandma or a mother, women are put in your life so that you can learn how to love. Pastor Mike, why are men put into my life? Well, I'd like to tell you. Thank you for asking. Men are put in your life so that you can learn how to honor. Men are put in your life so that you can learn how to honor. See in Ephesians chapter 5. Men, love your wives. <laughs> Honor and love are the two same thing. That they're equal to itself. How does a man love? What speaks to a man? Honor. Every single man movie is all about honor. Honor, honor, honor. It's what speaks to a man. Every... A uh, movie that is uh, 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 applied to women is all about love. Love, 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 love. But honor and love are the same thing. They hold equal value. They're just spoken differently. And you have to learn how to speak differently. You have to learn how to communicate differently. Because if you love, you'll hold them up in high esteem. And if you honor, you'll hold them up in high esteem. Either way, it's God working through you. Because we have to love and honor God. Just like we have to love and honor each other. Woo! Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Please help us, God. Learn how to love each other. 
Help us learn how to honor each other. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I... <laughs> have not even gotten into the word this morning. Jesus. Ah. You know why we continue to sin? You want to know why you continue to sin? It's because you don't love enough. You don't love enough. You love yourself and you don't love others. You need to learn how to love others. need to learn how to love God. And in loving, you honor. In loving, you honor. You hold up in high esteem. You bring value to the relationship. Come on now. If we really valued each other, we wouldn't be sitting. The only reason why I don't sin against my wife is because I love my wife. The only reason why I don't allow certain things in my life is because I love my wife. I love her with all my heart. I honor my wife. And she does the same for me. The only reason why I don't want to sin against you is because I love you. I want you in my life. And I understand the effects of sin. If I sin against you, it's going to bring a separation between me and you. And I don't want any separations. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. I want to love you. I want to be able to honor you. That way we can continue in a relationship. Come on now. <laughs> Let this thing get deep in you. I'm telling you the truth. You have to learn how to love. And I didn't like my pastor's answer. I didn't like it because I thought I knew what love was. And to be honest with you, I was stupid. I had nothing. I was nothing when it came down to love. It took me years and years and years and years to love my girls. I am so selfish. I was so into myself. It says in 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient. Love is kind. Most men are not patient. Most men are not kind. <laughs> when do you have to be patient, Pastor Mike? When do you have to be patient? When you don't want to be patient? When do you have to be kind, Pastor Mike? When do you have to be kind? When you don't want to be kind? When do you need faith, Pastor Mike? When you have nothing else to believe. <laughs> Love is patient. You're going to end up waiting. As we were talking about the other day, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Quit doing your own thing. Bring value into the relationship with God. 
bring value into this relationship with God and know that His way is a heck of a lot better than your way. So wait, I say, wait on the Lord. Let Him do these things. Let Him supply your need. If you don't, it will bring separation between you and God because you're not walking by faith. You're walking by fear. And without faith, you cannot please God. For those that please Him must believe that He is and that He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Seeking Him means that you're waiting. Seeking Him means that you're putting down what you want to do. And you're seeking Him, saying, Okay, God, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Have your way. Let your way be done. Let your kingdom come, God. I'm just going to wait and sit here and let you come and do this thing. (laughs) Come on now. Love is patient. We live in a society, we live in a world today, we live in a culture today that does not want to wait. Love is patient. We have to go against our present culture. Love is patient. It even means within the church. The church is not patient. We're more apt to be like the world than we are like the Spirit of God. The Lord waits. The Lord waits. The Lord yearns. The Lord waits on you. He's been waiting for quite a long time. He's been waiting for you to love him. There's no other choice. Only reason why you're separated, the only reason why you're not functioning correctly is because you're not doing what you need to do. And you know Right now, you know what you need to do. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not boast in itself. It is not prideful. It is not puffed up. Love rejoices in the truth. But it it hates iniquity. Come on now. People are saying, you got to love me. If you don't love me the way I am right now, then, then you're a hypocrite. They don't even know what love is. The only reason why you have any kind of ill against somebody is because of what they're doing or not doing. And it's not causing you any joy to see what they're doing or not doing. You don't like it. You still love them, but you don't like what they're doing. (laughs) Listen, I love you. But sometimes I don't like what you do. Am I judging you because you don't do what I like you to do? Who am I in your life? If I'm just a friend, then disregard my, my feelings towards you. Or wait a minute. Maybe a friend needs to understand that a friend, you know, really cares about what you do or don't do, right? Friends don't let friends drive drunk. Amen? True friends really care about you. And sometimes friends are in your life so that you can change. Hallelujah. (laughs) But who am I to you? Am I a pastor? Then hold me up as a pastor. Listen to these words. Am I a teacher? Then let me be a teacher. If you call me by any other title, then let me be as I am to you. Don't disregard who I am in your life. Disregarding me means that you don't care 
what I say. And you don't value me any more than you value anybody else. Correction is not rejection, but redirection for your protection. Doesn't the Bible say in Timothy that we have to sometimes correct, sometimes rebuke, sometimes exhort? Amen? It's all for the equipping of the saints, right? It's all for the goodness of that getting that fruit of righteousness where things are going better instead of downhill. Amen? I love you. And sometimes the word that comes out of my mouth is not going to be an easy word, but I'd rather see it. I, I would rather see you change for the better and, instead of hurting yourself. You know, I don't want you to hurt yourself any more than a father or a mother wants to see their child get hurt. God's the same way. And he uses people in your life to help you change your course of direction. Why? Because he loves you. Amen. Wow. All this stuff today, guys. I'm, whew. I may not be in the Bible, but I am in the Word. You guys can hear every word. Wow. Excuse me. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Hey, Rick, Roger, and Sue. Good morning. God calling. February 12th. Listen to this. This is interesting, man. Life is really consciousness. Life is really consciousness of me. Recognizing within ourself that God is with us. Have no fear. A very beautiful future lies ahead. Let it be a new life. A new existence in which every single happening Event, plan, you are conscious of me. I need to read that again. A very beautiful future lies before you. Let it be a new life, a new existence, in which every single happening, event, plan, you are conscious of me. And let... And, and I'm sorry, and this is life eternal that you might know me, Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Get this ever consciousness and you have eternal life, the life of ages. Be in all things led by the Spirit of God and trust in me in all and the consciousness of me will bring joy. Give me not only trust but gladness. Isn't that good? We're talking about love, we're talking about honor, we're talking about relationships. Again, in love, we will hold that person 
a person's in high esteem and will bring them into our conscience, into our person, right? Listen, anywhere I go, my wife goes with me. Everywhere I go, I'm conscious. My wife is right there. So are my kids. So are you. So is Christ. You guys are always right there. And everything I do, my conscience helps me make the right choice in reference to the relationships. Because again, because I love, because I value, because I honor, and because you guys are always there in my mind, on my heart, you guys are considered to be my motivation when it comes down to making good decisions. Okay? The Bible even says, check this out, guys. I wrote this down yesterday, and I didn't get to it yesterday, but go to Proverbs chapter 4. This is beautiful. Proverbs chapter 4. You guys there? Proverbs chapter 4. Look at this. <laughs> Ah, oh. <laughs> this is beautiful stuff, guys. Hey, Miss Linda. Proverbs chapter four. I hope you guys are getting out your Bibles. This is the only thing written paper. This is the only thing that I value. Okay. I've got tablets, uh, but they're not my Bible, okay? It's personal, amen? It's personal. Hey, Mr. Aaron. Look at this, I got... What do they call these things? A Kindle, right? I, I got me a Kindle, and on this Kindle I have three Bibles. I've got probably two dozen books within this Kindle. This Kindle ha has no value compared to this book. Amen? Just because I have three books of the Bible, different translations on this Kindle, doesn't bring anything to this book here. You know why? Because this is my Bible. This is mine. Someone gave it to me. Amen. Someone gave me this. And I've got other Bibles. Other Bibles that have been given to me. Uh-oh. And each one is mine. Okay? And because it's mine, because I bring value to it, then life, life comes forth, right? Life comes forth. I'm able to hear I'm able to see. Amen. I bring value to it. Some people read the Bible and there's no life that comes forth from it. Why? Because they, they have no value in it. They just think it's another book. And then they hold these instruments up, right? Now, these have value to some degree. But listen, what, what if the battery goes dead? This thing has, has a lifelong battery. <laughs> this thing never runs out. <laughs> Amen. This is going to run out one day. And I tell you the truth. You need, to, you need to read. Amen. That's why we read every morning. You guys in Proverbs chapter 4 yet? Let's go to verse number 20. You guys in verse number 20. 
He says, my son, son, son. That's a, that's a man, right? A young boy. My son, a young man. So we're learning about honor. Honoring who? The one who's speaking. My son, pay attention to my words. Bring value to my words. Love me, son. Love me, which means give me your attention. Give me your devotion. Give me a few minutes of your time. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. What did Jesus just say in God calling? Keep me in your consciousness. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep me in your consciousness. Don't ever forget me. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it spring the issues of life. Put away from you, put away from you a deceitful tongue and perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right nor to the left. Remove your foot from evil. Powerful. You guys see all that? He says, my son, listen. When I, what I'm about to say to you, you need to keep it right here in your consciousness, right here in the front frontlets of your eyes. You need to understand that you need to love. You need to honor. You need to continually think about your relationships. Ponder the path of your feet. Keep yourself in a position to where you're never separated from anybody. Whether it be your, your family. Whether it be the church. Whether it be the school. Whether it be the job. Whether it be God himself. Amen. You guys see all that. The more you receive, the more that you're responsible for. Amen. And you can't put one down because you pick something else up. You can't put them down. Why? Because these people are always going to be right here. And you can't put that down. You can't devalue one over the other. That's why you can't serve two masters. The Bible says in Matthew, you can't serve two masters. You're either going to hate the one and love the other. You're going to bring value to one and bring devalue to the other. You can't serve both God and mammon. Right? So being that you can't serve both God and mammon and you need a job, you need to lift up God and keep him up there and then do what God wants you to do. Right? Do what God wants you to do and serve him in it. Amen. I'm just saying, some people <laughs> separate themselves. And then they're in hardship because they value one over the other. And money's important, yes, but it's not God. Money's important, yes, but it does not supply my needs. Money's just like this, man. I get a paycheck on Friday, and it's gone on Saturday. I'm just saying, it, 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 it vanishes. And if I'm not careful, if I'm not careful, if I'm not careful, money will manage me instead of me managing my money. Next thing you know, I'm robbing, I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul. 
And I'm hurting both of them. Come on now, including myself. Next thing you know, I'm not talking to Peter and I'm not talking to Paul. Why? Because I'm guilty. I hurt the relationship and I'm not managing my money. I don't love them enough to change my habits in the way that I need to be doing things. Come on now. Woo! This one hurts. You got to be a good manager. I've told everyone this. When you give your paycheck, give 10% to God. And then give 10% to yourself. And learn how to live off of the 80%. Now, that's, that's, that's biblical now. That's biblical. Listen, if you're not going to honor God in your resources, you're just cutting yourself off from any kind of blessing. Okay? Who got you the job? Who gives you the strength? Who gives you the opportunity to wake up every morning? Who really gives you the, the house that you're living in? Come on now. Who gave you the car that you're driving? You better say God. Who, who keeps that car going? Keeps it from breaking down. Come on now. Isn't it God? Doesn't God bless your efforts when you're honoring him? It says in Malachi, you're not honoring me. And so there is a devourer that's devouring your resources. He says, if you honor me and give me the first fruits, He'll rebuke that devourer, amen? And he'll cause a window to open that will bless and give you what you need. So you have to honor God, okay? If you're not honoring God, you have to learn, right? Just like we said, if you're seeing a separation, it's because you're not doing something. You either love or honor one of the two. Right? So we learn how to honor God. We learn how to honor ourself. Jesus says in order to love others, you have to love yourself. How can you love others until you learn to love yourself? Amen? Come on now. You have to learn not to hurt yourself. If you don't hurt yourself, you're not going to hurt others. Hurt people hurt people. Come on now. <laughs> and if you bring honor to yourself, if you're taking care of yourself, then you'll learn how to take care of, take care of others. Amen? <laughs> I'm serious. Now that other 10% goes into a bank account like a savings. Okay? Give 10% to God and then give 10% to yourself. Put that aside. It's seed. It's seed money for whatever comes up. Maybe God wants you to do something with that money, but you got to put it away, right? Maybe, maybe, maybe the truck breaks down. Maybe you, you, uh, something goes on and, and you don't have the money to pay a power bill. Praise God, you got some money set back. You're not going to hurt yourself or anyone else. You're not even going to have to ask Peter for money. <laughs> I don't hear any amen. <laughs> but you see what I'm saying. Honor God. Honor yourself. Put some money aside. Okay? For hard times, rainy days. Right? Set some money aside. Maybe you want a brand new truck. Set some money aside. Don't go out and, and, and buy it on, on payments. Okay? Especially if you don't have the kind of money that you need to, to listen, making payments causes you to, to, uh, to uh, uh, pay for something double, if not triple, you know. Anyway, I'm not going to get into all that. I, I'm just saying it's easier to buy something for cash. Back in the day, my grandpa, my dad, 
paying things in cash. Well, Pastor Mike, you know, a truck is now $30,000. You don't need to get a $30,000 truck. Who in the heck was I saying that you need to get a $30,000 truck? Get you a $5,000 truck. Get your $4,000 truck, you know? Just as nice. <laughs> and learn how to take care of that truck. You know, the taxes on a $5,000 truck are a heck of a lot cheaper than a $50,000 truck. <laughs> oh, you forgot about paying taxes, right? <laughs> Every year, you have to pay taxes, property tax, right? It's a whole lot easier to come up with $50 than it is $1,000, you know, just to keep it on the road. I'm just saying. <laughs> Take care of God. Take care of yourself. And then learn how to live on the 80%. Be good managers, good stewards of your money. Okay? Live within your means. If you don't have it, you don't have it. Period. Learn how to live within your means. If you're, if you're faithful in the little bit, God says he'll give you more. Right? Right? You don't need to ask for a, a, a raise. You don't. God will give you a raise. <laughs> Amen. But you guys understand, you don't need a raise unless you're doing what's right with what you have. <laughs> if you have what you have and you're doing good with it, then let God promote you. Let God give you a raise. Amen? Because then you can handle it. I've seen many people, many people, they, they're crying that they, you know, want 25 bucks an hour, but they can't even handle the 10 bucks an hour that they have now. Well, I need more money. You know, no, you don't. You need to be a better manager of your money. Listen, I'm making not even half of what I used to make when I was over there at Jay Grady Randolph. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was kind of sad. I, I was uh, one of those guys, uh, and I hate, sorry, Mr. Jimmy, I'm just going to apologize right now. I was not one of those happy truckers back then. I was complaining all the time. And the reason why was because I had hurt myself. I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. Wasn't honoring God, wasn't honoring myself. Every, thing, every single dime, every single penny that came into my account, we spent. Had no focus on the future, didn't think about anybody else but myself. You know, and always screaming, I need more me, I need more pay. You know what, I don't need more pay. No, I don't. I just need to learn how to manage my money. And I was over, way over, when it came down to expenses. And I lost my house. I lost my house, ended up losing my job, ended up homeless because I couldn't take care of my bills. You know, it's just like a, us as Americans right now. I have no idea why we are so much in deficit. Having a general education and economics, we are, we're not good. You know, whenever I hear the word deficit, that's not a good sign. Because we're spending more than what we make. And now we're in trillions of dollars. That makes no sense to me. You know, but we don't want to cut out anything. No, 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 no. We just want to keep on spending, spending, spending. Right? That makes no sense to me. Because one day, one day, and I hope it's down the road, one day we're going to have to pay. We're going to have to... We're going to have to be responsible for what we've done. We're going to have to hold into account with the money that we've been negligent with. I'm just saying, guys. But see, 
just because the country is that way doesn't mean that you have to be that way. Because you can save yourself a lot of pain by doing the right thing.